Hi, welcome to the Calculus 3. And uh, this is the practice unit. And uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the assignment number three worksheets. It's related to the dot product. We are still in the unit vectors and the geometry of space. So for the dot product, we're going to take a look at what type of the problems we have. And uh, I'm going to work a few problems in this worksheet. So those are the problems that may be a little bit harder than what we talk about in the lecture series. So it can help you guys here, okay? So now I'm going to uh, go to the worksheets here. Okay, so here is the worksheets we have. Uh, a lot of problems here, okay? So the, I think, uh, yeah, so we have a lot of problems here. And uh, so the problems here, we're going to, so first problem I'm going to work, we're going to start out with the easiest one. And uh, so the, I'm going to work number 27 here. All right, so for the number 27, here, let's take a look here, all right. All right, so the first thing is here, I think that this one did not print out, right? So it's finding unit vector that is orthogonal to i plus j, and here is the j plus k. I think they got to cut out, right? So it's j plus k so here. So, I want to find the, you know, the, so this one's here, make sure you correct this. This is a J, all right? So this is a J plus K, so here. Okay, so now let's take a look. Okay, so I want to find a unit vector, so it's orthogonal to both uh, these two. And uh, this problem, in fact, are going to become very easy when we talk about the next sections, when we talk about the cross product. So the, if we know the cross product concept, then this problem is going to become very easy. But in here, you know, since we don't know, that we have not learned that. So let's see, how do we use the dot product? Let me give you some space here. So how do I use the dot product concept and try to, you know, try to do it? Okay, so now they want to find a vector, right, unit vector. So let's say the A, so I get the vector A here. Let's say the A is A1, A2, and A3, right? So let's see here, because we have the base, basic the unit vectors here. So it's an IJK, so I know it's in the three dimensions here. Okay, so now the first one is A plus J, right? I plus J. So that means the a dot the i plus j, okay, is going to be equal to what? Zero, right? Because we know from the, the lecture number two, if two vectors, they are orthogonal, what are going to be? Then when the dot product is going to become the zero because the cosines 90 degrees is zeros, right? Okay, so now let's take a look here. So the a dot, uh, okay, so a dot i plus j will just be one, one, and uh, what? One, one, and uh, zeros, right? Okay, so the a dot j, so that means I'm going to get a1 plus a2 equal to zero, correct? Okay, so the same way is here because it's orthogonal to the j plus k, so this is dot j plus k, right? So the, this one also going to be equal to zero. So that means you can do, so this will be the a dot j plus k will be the zero one once, correct? So that means the, this will be the a one plus uh, a three. Oh, sorry, 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 okay, A1 plus A3 equal to zero. So I guess uh, here, maybe not, so it's I plus K, okay, so I thought it was the J plus K. So I'm sorry, so this is I plus K here. All right, so that's better. All right, so not uh, looking carefully. So this is I plus K, so here. All right, so this is one, 
N zero one. So it's A one plus A three. Okay, so now I can solve the system of equations. So because A1 plus A2 is equal to zero, so the A1 is equal to the negative A2, and A1 plus A3 equal to zero. So what I can continue here, so I know the A1 is equal to the negative A3, correct? Okay, so now because this is a union vector, so what that means, the union vector, that means A1 squared plus A2 squared plus A3 squared is going to what? Because it's going to once, right? So that means A1 squared plus, because A2 is equal to negative A1, so this is another A1 squared. And other A1 squared is equal to one. So I have three A1 squared equal to one. See here, so that's why the A1 would be equal to plus minus one over square root of the threes, right? Okay, so now if A1 is equal to positive, so I have the vector A going to be, see here, if the A is a positive the square root of one over square root of three, then what happens here, we're going to be negative and this one going to be negative, right? Okay, so, or you're going to have A, if A is negative one over square root of the three, so what do you have here? You're going to have one over square root of the three, one over square root of the three here, all right? Okay, so that's it, right? So this is a pretty, uh, you know, the easy problem, and now let's take a look at the next ones here. I want to find, so the, this one's here, you know, is like, I want to find acute angles between these two lines here, okay? And um, so the, okay, so when we try to do this one, so how do we do this one here, okay? So take a look at the first ones here. So the first lines here, right, so 2x minus y equal to 3, so basically you can rewrite this one is equal to what is a 2x minus a three. So by the slope and the intercept form, what do we know about this ones here? The slope is going to be rise over rounds, right? So slope is two over one, so it's a two, okay? So if a slope is two, you can rewrite this into a vector. So it's rise over rounds, right? So this is one and two. You can write a vector. It's one and two see here. So I know this line. So the y minus y equal to the two x minus three is going to be what? It's a parallel to this vector here, it's one, two, right? So we know this, this is what we call it, the standard vector, correct? So that means if you take a look here, that means, you know, the lines here, probably, you know, the line, okay, so here, let me go up a little bit, all right? So the two X minus Y equal to three, right? Okay, so when the x equal to zero, y equal to negative three, one, two, three, if you plot here, y equal to zero, x equal to one and a half, so it's here, right? So you will have a line here, right? So this is my line, two x minus y equal to three. Then we say that the vector two and one, right? Two, one and the two. So that means one and the two is here. This is the we call this the standard vector, correct? The standard position vector. So this is the one and the two. So it's a parallel to these lines here. Okay, so the reason why I want to find the vector because I know the dot product that has a formula can help me to find the angle. So if you find the vector to parallel to the given line, so the angle between the vectors will be same as the angle between the two lines here, right? Okay, so now in the, you know, in this ones here, you can rewrite this one is equal to y equal to the negative three x uh, um, plus seven, right? So the in here, what is the, so the slope here is what? 
is a negative three, right? So that means uh, uh, you can rewrite this. The slope is right or wrong. So you can rewrite this is uh, this as one negative three. So you can rewrite this one as your standard position vectors here. So we say, okay, this is vector A, right? And uh, this is vector B here. So for the both lines here, you find the vectors here, right? So now you can use our cross product. So remember the cross product, what is the formulas here? We say cosine theta is equal to what? A dot B. And uh, what is here? Like uh, this is the A and uh, this is the B here, right? Okay, so the A dot B here is will be one times one plus, so it's negative five. Okay, so this will be negative five, right? So it's one times one is one. Then the here, this will be the, the length of the A will be what? Square root of the five. And the length of the B, what is here? It's square root of what? Square root of the tens here, right? Okay, so the now, if, uh, uh, so the in here, you can get it uh, and then we can, put it into the calculator, and then you will be able to get a what here. So this is like, I think you can simplify that to the, you know, the, to the negative uh, one over square root of two. And uh, from the, you know, the, from the, you know, the unit circle, so the theta is equal to what? So the theta is equal to 135 degrees, right? But it's here, they want to find the acute angles. So this is the acute angle will be what? So the, that means it will be what, 45 degrees. So that means these two lines, right? So they, these two lines like intersect here, and so this is the acute angle, so it's a 45 here. So think about it, right? So for this problem, since now we know the vector and we know the dot product, can you imagine when you guys were in the high school in the geometry class, if the teacher give you two lines and you want you to find the angle between the two lines, do you know how to find it? Right, so it will not be easy task, right? So probably, you know, your teacher will ask you to find like this way. And so it's like uh, uh, very difficult, you know, with, you know, like when you were in the high school. So probably your teacher, the way, you know, we will do is we say, okay, you know, think about in the geometries, right? So you have two lines here, right? So intersect here. So first things here, you need to go to find the intersections here, right? And then you need to go, hey, find a, you know, the perpendicular here, right? Then find a, what is the, choose a point on the first line and find the perpendiculars here, find the distance here, and then use the trick function, try to get it. So it's a pretty complicated. Right, so in the high school, you have to give you the two lines and once you find the angle. But now in the calculus three, we simplified a lot of things here, all right? Okay, so now let's take a look at the next problem I'm going to work on. All the other problems here is kind of pretty simple. So I'm going to work on the number 45 here, okay? So the number 45, so they said, uh, hey, we defined, right? So the said uh, now we defined uh, a new, you know, like a, a new new vector. So this new vector we put it so orthogonal b to a here said, uh, and uh, they said okay, this new vector is we defined as the b minus the projection vector b over a is orthogonal to a here. Okay, so this is what we call is also orthogonal projections. Okay, this one's here, the proof and the, you know, it's not hard. And also it's kind of like the, you know, easy to understand. So let's take a look at what is this one here. 
Okay, from the previous lecture, right? So this is my A, this is my B. So we know the projection B to A. Okay, so we talk about the projection B to A here, right? So we say, uh, we say, hey, when the projection, you think about it, you have a sun here, right? So then it's shining through that, then you will create a what? You create a, create a shadows, right? So the, that means this one is a diagonal see here. So the shadow you create, uh, and so this is, uh, okay, so this is the, you know, the shadow. If you want to find the lens, then this we call it a component. So we call it, this is a components of the B to A. Or you can treat this green one is the projections, right? So it's a vector. So this vector here, this is a projection vector of the B project to the A. Do you remember that? Okay, now if you use, uh, you know, the vectors, right? So if you use like the, we say the B minus the projection, a over B, right? So if you use uh, like a B minus the projection, A minus B here. So do you remember, you know, when you graph it, right? So what is the B minus A, B minus projection B over A? So it's this vector, correct? Because it's the diagonal, the opposite diagonal here. Right, so it's a, so it's a end up in here. So this blue ones here, okay. So this blue ones here, this is the B minus projection B of A, right? It's just a pure, you know. So this this factors here, the here this one, this one, this one is B's, right? So the B minus A, just like we did uh, in the. I think in the first, uh, first or second or second lecture, we, we know how to graph it, right? So this blue one is B minus projection B over A. So it's just don't get confused. This one give you a little bit more complicated form, but still it's just like a, similar like the A factors, right? So obviously you see here, right? If I graph, you know this one, right? So the this one, this is. This blue vector obviously is what perpendicular to A, so that is orthogonal. So now, you know, from the graph, it's easy to recognize that, right? So now let's take a look. Okay. So let's take a look here. So we know if it's orthogonal. So if the orthogonal, that means what? A or the B dot product A going to give you what? Give you zeros, right? Okay, now what is also going to be over A? So here, this is the B minus the projector, projection of a B over A, then dot product A, right? Okay, now distributive property is B dot A minus, right? So minus the projection, a over B and the dot A. And then from the, you know, the previous last uh, video, the previous uh, lecture. So I know how do you find the projection vectors here? So this will be the A dot B, right? So then here on the buttons here, right? So this will be the A square A, right? And the now you dot A here, all right? So in here, so remember this is the formula for here, right? It's the projection vector formula. Now you dot A here. So this one will give you another A squares, right? So boom, boom, these two cancel. And then you have a B dot A minus A dot B. And I know this one, you can switch the order, so so what is here is zero, so here. So I know if the dot product is zero, then that means what? Uh, that means they are what they are, you know, perpendicular. So they are also is orthogonal, so here, okay? So this is number 45. All right, so this one's here, just let you see. Then the next one's here, 
And uh, this is uh, uh, the last one we're going to take a look from this worksheet. Okay, so this one really going to show you a very important formula. I strongly recommend you try to write these formulas. That means in the R2 here, right? So if I have any line, I have any point, what is the distance from this point to this line? Okay, so here is the formula here. Of course, you can use the geometry methods to do it, but it might take us a long time. So this formula is really pretty easy, right? So this will be say, hey, whatever the point you have, then you times it, the reason why I put it into the absolute value because of the distance, right? So it has to be, you know, has to be positive, right? So that's why I put in the absolute values here. And then, you know, like, uh, you know, the, so the, then the bottoms here will just be the a squared plus b squared. And uh, first, right, let me try to just uh, use this formula, try to see how do I find the distance. Then we're going to prove this formula. So let's say find the distance from the point negative two, three to the three x minus four y right, plus uh, five. So I know then the distance based on this formula will just be what? Okay, so square roots of a squared, so it's nine plus negative four squared is what? It's 16, right? Then the top will just be your constants three, three times negative two. So this is three times negative two, and plus b is three times negative four, plus five, okay? And uh, so it's easy. So your answer is 13 over five. So that is the distance after, you know, the, from this point to the, you know, to this line. So think about that's what they mean here, right? So the here, okay, so like in here, so this is one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so negative two, three. So you see here, this is the point. And then like I have this line, let's say here, when x equal to, when x equal to zero, y equal to a little bit over one see here. And the y equal to zero, x equal to here. So something here, right? So here, this is your line. All right, so this is your line and our point here is negative two and the three, right? So that means from this point to this line here, you want to find the distance. You see, by using the calculus three formula, it's very easy to do, right? Can you imagine this one when you are, you know, if you are in the geometry class, how are you going to do it? The first, you probably need to do what? you need to find this red line by using the perpendicular line concept, right? After you find these lines here, use the like a slope and the one point, then you will need to find the intersection of these two lines at this point, okay? Now after that, you use the two points distance formula, so you will get the same thing. So it takes a few steps, right? So first find the perpendicular line and find the intersections of the point, and then apply the, the distance formula for two points. That's what we learn in the geometry. As now you will see, this is a super handy formula and it's very easy, all right? Okay, so now I'm going to uh, show you how do we do it, okay? So this line see here, the red line, all right, is a perpendicular to this given line. So in the, you know, in the calculus, we have a special term. So this line we learned that in the previous lecture, we call that this is the normal, normal vector. Right, so this will be the normal vectors to these lines here, correct? Okay, so that's what we call the normal vector. And uh, you want to find the distance 
from this point to this line, basically you are looking for this is the distance, right? So, okay. So now the first thing is that if this is my normal vector, I need to know how to find the normal vectors here, okay? So in here, okay, so take a look here. I want to do in general cases here. So if you have any lines here, ax plus by plus c equal to zero, so the, I know I can change to the slope and the intercept form. We did that. So y is equal to what? A negative a over b x and uh, minus x c over b, right? Okay. And uh, so this is uh, what? This is our slope, correct? Okay, so this is the a, negative a minus b. So the, that means, uh, so, so this one here is a over, so that means uh, this one going to be what? So this is a parallel, this is a parallel to the vector, what vector? Rise over runs, right? So rise over runs, so it's a negative b, it's B and the negative A here. Okay, so I'm looking for these normal vectors, right? So the normal vector is a perpendicular. So I know the perpendicular line. So the perpendicular line, the slope will be, you switch it, right? So the slope will be, you take the reciprocal. So what is a reciprocal? It's a B over A. And the then is a negative of the reciprocal. So it's a negative here already. So negative negative is B over A. Oh, so the perpendicular line is the reciprocal. So based on this slope, what is my perpendicular line going to be? Rise over wrong again, right? So it's A, B. Oh boy, it's here, did you see something? Okay, so this is the first thing, it's very important here. If you give me any lines here, right? Ax plus by plus c equal to zero, I know the normal vectors here is what? The normal vectors, right? So the normal vector is going to be ab. How nice is that, right? So the, for any given line, the normal vector we're going to be a b here. Okay, so I'm going to erase this graph here because I'm going to prove in general, you know, in general what is the okay. So in general, what is the cases here? Okay, so this is just our you know, the examples here. So so the first thing is here we already did. You might want. Uh, to write this one into your formula sheet. So also we're going to use it a lot, all right? So that means for any given line in the R2, then the normal vector for this line will just be the constant in front of these lines here. Okay, so while ago, so we say, okay, so if you want to find a, a distance, right? So here, so, if this is the point perpendicular, right? So we said uh, here, this is perpendicular. So if uh, for any given point, right? So X1, Y1. So right now we're going to prove this in general. And uh, this is, we call this a point uh, P1 here. All right, okay, so the point P1. And uh, now, okay, so I'm just going to hold this point is a point of what? Point P two here, okay, and then these lines here, okay. I'm sorry, this is not a point P two here. Let's see. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to find. Okay, so in here. Okay, so I'm going to find here. So this is the point I call this the point P two. And then I'm going to find the other two points because I know the two points start a line, right? So I call this is Q1 
and this is Q2, and these lines here, this is the Ax plus By plus C equal to zero. This is the lines here, okay? So as we talked before, we say, I'm going to find the distance from this point to the line. So this green, that's the length we are looking for. So remember from the projections here, so imagine you have a sun shining here, right? So you have the sun shining here. So the distance really is just the shadow of what? It's really is just the shadow of this vector, the P1, P2 vectors here. Right, so imagine that. So can you can you see that? So it's kind of like the sun. You're shining here. So that's the same thing like we talk about the projections, right? So the distance will just be the this we call the components, right? Okay. So the so let's take a look. So in here, so we know the distance. So distance from the point to the line right, is what we defined before, is the components, right? So it's the components, right? So it's in, so like this green one, also this green one, what do we call it here? Do you remember what we just did? We said this is the normal vector, right? Because it's a perpendicular. So I use the N to represent a normal vector. So take a look at this the distance really, is you have the P1, P2, this vector projected into the normal vector. So this is normal vectors here, right? And then which vector you project to? P1, P2, all right? Okay, so now that's the first thing we established, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at this Q1, Q2. So those are the two points on this given line. So Q1, let's say, is the point A1, B1. Q2 is the point A2, B2. Okay, think about this. This is, they are the two points on these lines here, all right? So then I know these lines here, right? So the, then the, this line, this vector, I can write as the Q1, Q2 vector. So it will be A2 minus A1. B2 minus B1. All right. Okay. So we're almost there and just hang here. Okay. So we know the AB, right? So this AB is what? This is my normal vector, right? This is my normal vector. And the normal vector dot this PQ vector, right? Start this A2 minus A1. B2 minus B1, because they are perpendicular, what do we expect this one to be? We expect this one to be zeros, right? Okay, so now let's simplify this a little bit. So this is the A times A2 minus A1 plus B times B2 minus B1 is equal to what? Is equal to zeros, right? So distributive property, a the A the A1 plus B the B2 minus B the B1 equal to zero. Okay, combine the similar terms here. Okay. Okay, so we combine the similar terms here. So let's take a look at this term A and A2. Okay, and B and B2 here. Then the same things here, negative A1, negative B2 here. Okay, so let's see what is the, you know, the, what is the values here, all right. Okay, so because this line is AX plus BY equal to C, right? This is my lines, the given lines, right? Okay, so you substitute, Okay, so you substitute uh, to the A2 point, right? So you substitute the A2 point. That means A times A2 plus B times B2 is equal to what? It's going to equal to negative C here, right? So, okay, so it's equal to negative C here. So the same way if you substitute uh, 
you know, the Y, the B2 point, A2, B2 point, A1, B1 point. So you will get A to the A1 plus B to the B1 is equal to what? Equal to negative C also, correct? Okay. So that's why this equation is true. Okay, so now I'm going to get a more space here. Let me see, I can more space to finish our proof. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so now, okay. So P1, P2, right? So the P1, P2. Okay, so P2 is here. P2 is here. Let's say the P2 is the point, uh, what? x2, y2. Okay, so now let's start with this one's components, my normal vector, p1, p2. This will be equal to use the components formula is the, the length of my normal vector. Now here, the, I have the absolute value is because of the distance. So it's a normal vector dot product p1, p2. So P1, P2 will be X2 minus X1, right? And this is Y2 minus Y1, all right? And then the N normal vector is AB. So here, this one is, oh, my formula almost is showing up, right? So I know the normal vectors here is AB, so it's A squared plus B squared. Okay, so now let's take a look at what is here. So this will be the A times X2 minus A X1 plus B Y2 minus B Y1 here, all right? Okay, so now in here, just from, okay, so from the previous, I know the, this one's here, this is a square plus b squares, right? So from the previous, I know x2, y2, right? x2, y2, look at the graph here. x2, y2, oops, 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 okay? So x2, y2 is what? This is the point. What happened here, this is the point. So, so this is the point, right? It's on the line. So I know from here, because it's on the lines here, just like we say anything here, like we show here will be equal to what? Will be equal to negative C, correct? Okay, so let me see here. So, okay, so here, I know the X, X2, Y2. This one's here will be what? Will be the negative C's here. So this is a negative, uh, let me color code, maybe it's easier. So it's a negative C, all right? And then we still have a negative AX1 minus BY1. Then you take the negative signs out. So this is A squared plus B squared. And this is AX1 plus BY1 plus C. Ta da, we finally proved our formula. All right, so it's a long proof, but like I said, uh, if you don't fully understand the proof, that'd be fine. I think you, you want to try to understand, but if not, let's, I guess that's fine. And uh, but uh, make sure you know this formula, right? Then the another very important concept is here, right? So for any given lines here, then the normal lines will be what? It will be the coefficient, right? Of ax plus by the coefficient a and b, all right? And then that will be your normal lines here. And you have to remember this concept because later when we talk about the plan, you know, like if we have X, B, Y, C, Z, now how do I find the normal vector to the plans here, right? So we're going to expand that. So in here, so those are the two key concepts. 
So for any given lines here, you need to find, so the normal vector is here. Also, you understand the distance here, that is the projection length, right? So that's what we talked about in the previous one. Now here is the formula, and this one will simplify your calculation a lot. So I strongly recommend you and put that into a separate piece of the paper. All right. Okay, that's it. That is for this worksheet. And um, I think for the, all the remaining problems, uh, you know, should be pretty easy here. And uh, I think uh, you should be able to, you know, uh, get it very easy and uh, the proof here. So I want to, let me show you here. Okay, so the one other thing. Okay, so the proof of the here is very easy to show here, right? Okay, so this one's here. This one, the problem number 63, this is also a very, very useful formula. You might want to, you know, the, write it out. This is what we call the is parallelogram law. So what's that mean? Okay, so you want to show here, but basically you want to remember this uh, formula, you know, this formula is here, right? And uh, so what is a parallelogram parallel law? And uh, the parallelogram law is the, what is like, uh, so in the geometry, if you want to show it, it's pretty, it's not going to be easy. So if this is A, this is the B, right? So I have two diagonals, right? So this is one diagonal and then this is another diagonal, right? So basically you take a look at the A plus B is one diagonal here, so this diagonal. Right, so this is the a plus b here, and this diagonal is a minus b. So what do they tell you here? They tell you one very good thing here. So they say the, if you give any parallel grain, you have this uh, absolute uh, value, right? That means that the length, you know, if you square the length of the two diagonal add them, it will be equal to you add the four sides. You know, you square the four sides and add it. So that what is a geometric interpretation about the parallelogram loss here. And uh, this one is super, super easy to prove here. I'm not going to spend it. You can go ahead and finish that because if you say the A plus B, right? So here you can just say this is A plus B dot A plus B. Then the same here, A minus B, you can just say this is a minus b dot a minus b, and then combine them, you will get it. So the, like I said, uh, the proof part is pretty easy, but uh, I do want you to remember this we call this parallelogram law, and uh, that means uh, right. That's, so that means you know the one of the you know when you add that you know when you add the all four sides. Uh, the parallelogram length square will be equal to the square you add the square of the two diagonals here. All right. Okay. That's it. Right. So you know the special case, right? So you know the special cases here is will be like a, like a rectangles, right? So then by the you know the by the Pythagorean theorem, that's why you know the the square of here will be equal to square here add the square here, right? So this will be the, so, but you can extend that to general parallel grind. So we call it, this is parallel grind law, and it's very useful from the, also it's proved from the use the calculus three tools. It's a way easier than when you're in the geometry class. All right, okay, that's it. Okay, so good luck, and I hope you can solve the, all the other problems here. And uh, it's a very good exercise and make sure you know, you understand all the dot product properties here. All right, so uh, hope you'll be able to finish all the problems without any issues. All right, so nice to talk to you. You have a good day and uh, looking forward to talk to you in our next lecture. So will be the cross product. It's another very interested vectors operation. Okay, bye.